Hey guys, Robert Kitty here. So, what was it? Yes, struggling to read what we once found was easy. I remember chatting with some guys about um, some books that they used to read. Things such as, you know, Lord of the Rings, um, you know, um, big old sort of books like that. And compared to the, the way that they use the language now, say like, you know, Harry Potter or even Fifty Shades of Grey, the language, the structure, the imagery is just so different. Um, before you had to like, they said that the, the imagery of the language in the books back then was words that aren't used or used a lot these days, the actual structure made for a more in-depth imagery and nowadays when they go back and read it they find it a struggle hard to read so they're used to having easy images in their head uh, that come to mind and they said that that's I, I guess it's, it's hard to even even imagine that reading a book and comprehending what you're reading is actually a skill something that you need to practice um, and you look at the way and the style in which people write these days, um, the imagery is, I wouldn't say just simple because it takes a bit of craft to actually write imagery for people, but the language has changed dramatically. So, I mean, when you think about, think about the books that you read now, um, think about what you used to read. Have you actually gone back and read some of the books that you used to read and do you still find it uh, as interesting to read or as easy to read as you used to like you know could you really absorb yourself into it and if not why is that is it because as uh, some people say you know we've we're getting much better at being distracted we're getting skilled at being easily distracted or can you really focus and absorb yourself in the book and does it have anything to do with the language um, with the way it's structured, with the words that are used. I mean, quite often these days there's uh, a big movement to change a lot of things. Some of the old classic things, you know, Charles Dickens, um, you know, even J.R. Tolkien's not that new as far as books are concerned, but definitely the language is different from, say, like Jane Eyre. Um, and things like, you know, Julius Caesar, Shakespeare, you know, the, the actual language. Do you think people would comprehend these days Shakespeareans, Julius Caesar or Romeo and Juliet in the original format? And, you know, how do you think that someone would <laughs> put that particular play or book into modern day terms? I've seen actually some really cool books with regards to that. Uh, was it? Uh, sense sensibility in zombies and or no pride prejudice in zombies uh, sense sensibilities in sea monsters you know twisted classics pretty awesome to read um, and definitely a way to get interested in the way things were written back then and the terminologies and yeah things back then they had prejudices, different terminologies, like completely out of fashion and out of style, uh, non-PC ways of looking at things, but it also gives you context in the way things actually were back then. And, you know, it's not to say that everything was bad then. For that, that time, there was a lot of, I mean, it's just like these days, for, for that time, there's a lot of things that you did and didn't do. Um, but anyway, I segue. Reading. Can you read stuff that you used to read before? If not, why not? What's changed? You, society, everything? Have you taken the time recently to sit and read? I mean, I listen to a lot of audiobooks because, you know, I'm pretty much on the move a lot. So my thinking is if I listen to audiobooks, I will get some things a lot better, uh, some things I won't. But then my attention will go in and out to, to probably pick, my subconscious will probably pick what's most relevant for me to listen to at the time, um, which is handy. Because other times I'm just like, oh, it's just background noise. But other times I'm like, hey, no, you know what, that, that applies to me at this point in time. That resonates. I can use that to improve myself. 
So even these days, have you made the switch from just reading to audiobooks or do you kind of go in between? Do you read hard copy anymore? I mean, really, do you actually have to pick up a book and read or do you do it all in ebooks? I mean, ebooks are awesome, um, but there's also something about actual physical books. Um, you know, the texture, the smell, the, the actual print that you see physically there with you. So, I don't know. Have a think, a big, think about that for a little bit. I mean, reading, pick, pick a book that you, you read, you know, as a child or, you know, a while or haven't read for a long time. Um, do you still have it? You know, what memories does it evoke for you? Good, bad, what have you learned from that book? You can read a book over and over again. You can get something different from it every time. Just like listening to music, just like watching a TV. It's pretty awesome. Anyways, that's it for... I don't know, it's pretty bright and sunny. Definitely good that it's clearing up. I'm hoping it's going to be sunny for a little bit, especially for those farmers who've gotten rain recently. Hey, Luke. <laughs> It's awesome. They got some. They got some wetness, and they get some dry and sun. Grass is going to be green. That's awesome, and hopefully that'll cycle through and keep going throughout. You know, the summer it won't get too dry. Okay. Anyways, think about that. What you read, what you like to read. Do you find it more difficult? Why do you find it more difficult? Have you thought about that? I mean, what do you prefer to read these days? You know, taste can change. Anyway, see you guys later. Love you.